Air traffic controllers have to cope with constant pressure and the consequence of a mistake can be catastrophic. So it is perhaps understandable that Britain got itself in a kerfuffle when it emerged last week that the air traffic control system that governs London City Airport is now to be based around 160 miles away from the runway. Aircraft will be directed from Hampshire by controllers watching live footage from high-definition video cameras. Well, Ben Fogel is the editor of Jane's Airport Review and he joins us on the programme now. Ben, welcome to the programme. Explain how this new system will work. Hello. Um, The new system is what is called a a digital tower um, using a a technology provided by the Swedish company Saab uh, and a number of subcontractors. Basically, uh, a a suite of cameras, high definition cameras and pan tilt zoom cameras and uh, a very, very strong uh, what you might call an Internet connection, long distance Internet connection coupled with data feeds from a number of other sensors, including radar and various ground sensors, will feed air traffic control data that's mission critical from London City all the way to Swanwick in Hampshire, which I think is about 130 kilometres away. Well, they they say that it will be more real than real, that you can uh, get a 360-degree de- degree panorama compressed into 250 degrees. It's, it seems far too good to be true. I mean, is, is it better than eyes and ears? Well, that's a, it's a very interesting question, and it's one that's still being uh, debated at high levels in the aviation community. However, uh, when it comes to the realer than real question that you asked, there are what's called augmented reality uh, data feeds that can be seen by the NATS controllers in Swanwick, which basically add extra information to what would have been seen normally by a, a staffed tower, by people in a staffed tower. So to the extent that the controllers all that distance away will actually get more information than they would have seen just by pointing binoculars out of the window or looking at their what you might call old-fashioned screens, then it, it, it is realer than real. Well, forgive me for being old-fashioned, but you mentioned something along the lines of what of a strong internet connection. Now, I know, I think we all know, that that doesn't always stay as strong as it could do. Ben, how do they make sure that if it does get disconnected, that the planes don't fall out of the sky? Yes, it's a, a, I, I perhaps use the wrong term there, describing it as a strong internet connection. It's a, it's a, um, I think in the case of London City, it's a, a dedicated connection. So it doesn't actually uh, carry any, uh, it doesn't actually use any, any commercial um, uh, carrier, as it were. Um, and there will also have to be, in any remote house solution, there has to be a backup, there has to be redundancy. For this to go ahead, the safety case with the Civil Aviation Authority would have to have been proved. And it wouldn't go ahead if it hadn't been tested as as being a a thoroughly safe system in which the mission-critical information uh, can be assured of being delivered in a a very timely way. And briefly, you said it's been proved in Sweden at Onskoldsvik and Sundsvall Airport. This has been in, in existence for quite some time. Are we getting unnecessarily worried? Um. I would t- take a punt and say yes. I, 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 th- I think um, there is a strong tendency now among the air traffic management community and particularly among technology developers and also particularly in Europe to move towards this, this era of uh, digital towers and remote air traffic control. I would say that in the case of the UK, this does mark a new milestone for NATS. It is the first uh, of their UK airports for which tower control will be um, provided remotely. But um, if you look at Sweden, as you've mentioned, Norway, Hungary, Germany, and there was also a a, a case in Ireland, uh, a a project in Ireland last year, um, it very much seems to be the, the way of the future. Ben Fogel from Jane's Airport Review, thank you for joining us. That's all we have time for today's programme. 